time this year at this location. On that topic, Virgin Australia Track Facts. Have a look at it. What a wonderful racetrack this is. So we've got a 13-turn racetrack, and I heard Craig Lowndes talking before about all the virtues of street circuit racing. There are painted lines, cambered road, manhole covers, giant concrete blocks, big curbs. There are a million things out there as tripwires, and this is a place where the work rate for the drivers is incredibly vigorous. They've got to work incredibly hard to be able to stitch together a lap around this location. Now, the lap record's held by Nick Perkett. He got into the high 12s last year for Brad Jones Racing. New livery on that car this weekend. There's a lot of news around this weekend. We've reached the halfway point of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. There are lots of things for us to discuss, but I'm going to be fascinated by the way in which this session is going to unfold, which kicks off in the not-too-distant future about a minute and 20 odd seconds before we hear from race control for the cars to be able to go out. Fastest time yesterday was achieved by Lee Holdsworth. Shane Van Gisbergen, who's already rolled out at 45 degrees in the pit lane, was the second fastest. And remember that last year, Shane did an unbelievably good job in that car. He was the quickest man, got the armor all pole in the shootout on Sunday morning, converted it to a race win on Sunday. And then the day before on Saturday, Jamie Wincup his teammate knocked together his 10th victory on the Reed Park streets. So very, very impressive performance for Red Bull. And so the real question for us, I think, this weekend as the broadcast team is, can Red Bull turn around what's been a topsy-turvy season? Beautiful images of this racetrack precinct in Castle Hill just to the north. It's just a whisker under a thousand odd feet. And we're seeing it today because yesterday it was shrouded in cloud all around us. We had some pretty wild weather. So it's our 11th visit to this precinct and we've never before seen rain at this location so the first time yesterday that everybody had to bolt on those wet Dunlop tyres and they wobbled their way round. Some people didn't even bother to do much out there which was quite extraordinary. So it was wet, slippery, hard to deal with and it had to bring the very best out of our drivers in order to be able to deal with those conditions and some of them, well they didn't even bother. Practice Event number three, eight. Event 8, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, races 17 and 18 for 2019. 200 kilometres of racing to come this afternoon, another 200 tomorrow. The 22nd and 23rd time that supercars have been on the streets of Townsville. And this is a beautiful circuit, a track that combines the best of both worlds. It's a street circuit together with a permanent facility. What a story we've got in the championship so far this year. Scott McLaughlin has done an extraordinary job. He's already 319 points clear in his quest for a back-to-back -back title. And he is shooting this weekend for six race victories in a row. Quite extraordinary. The big news, Triple Eight, Holden and Red Bull have re-signed. And we're going to see Holden Commodores and that group out for the next couple of years at a minimum. And that's great news for a, a bunch of the teams and drivers up and down the pit lane. This weekend, also the announcement on Thursday on the trackside program that Scott McLaughlin and Fabian Coulthard will stay together as a combination crew for the, at least this next 18 month period and possibly longer. We're not 100% sure in terms of the contractual detail. And there's a whole bunch of other news. For example, that Michael Caruso is in for Richie Stanaway this weekend. By the way, the reason why there's been a change there, apart from the credentials for Michael, is that Chris Pitt has been driving that car in the absence of Richard Stanaway because of his neck injury. But as a co-driver, you can't do more than a couple of races a year, otherwise it's deemed as unfair testing. So it's no shadow on Chris, and it's a great opportunity for Michael. I know that Mark Scaife has made his way back into the commentary box. Scaife, there's been a burst of news in this last seven days. There's plenty for us to talk about, notably the way in which everybody's going to have to get on with the job substantially in this session because it's key. Absolutely, Neil. Good morning. It is a fantastic racetrack. I love your explanation of the uniqueness of this layout. Street circuit on one end, hybrid parklands, permanent style circuit on the other. And as you said, with the limited running, the wet weather running, first time ever from practice one yesterday, a relatively dry finish to the day where Lee Holdsworth was fastest. And this section of road, we saw great images in the wet and the dry through turn five and six. We pick up on Shane Van Gisbergen, who was dominant here on the Sunday of 2018. We love this place. We love the bumps. We love the character. And it's very compact. And the fluency and the way that Wing Cup has performed here over the years has been extraordinary. Had a big off here in the wet yesterday. But he's got, in terms of technique, a very 
beautiful, accurate technique. He, he gets a nice rhythm. He's had 10 wins at this location, which is extraordinary in terms of race wins compared to everybody else. He's got three times the wins of anyone at this location. And we're on board with him now, showing off his craft. Remember, when you cast your mind back one year, Wink Cup and Van Gisbergen were the men to beat. Can they take it to Scott McLaughlin? Neil just referred to an extraordinary season and McLaughlin trying to back up his 2018 performance. Well, he hasn't just done that, he's done it and, and more. It's been an unbelievable year for Scott McLaughlin. He's had three 300-point weekends. It's been an incredible performance, hasn't it? And uh, it started with the fracture at the end of the 2017 campaign, which didn't go according to the script. And it's like he's grown another dimension through the back end of last year. I think the reinforcement of winning a championship, which you've had the privilege of doing on multiple, it reconfirms your belief in yourself. That car's working perfectly. They've done a great job in the crafting of that car this year. And he's setting a benchmark that's really outside of everybody else, including others that are running the Mustang. It's been amazing. Totally. Isn't it great to see some sunshine out there? This is the Townsville <laughs> that we know and love. They're shooting for 26 degrees today, so plenty of shorts and t-shirts out there for anybody watching down south at the moment implore you to get up here at some stage to enjoy this event we've stayed in the warmth in this portion of the virgin australia supercars championship season there's some good news for the red bull holden racing team on top of the announcement on thursday night fastest time for van gisbergen 12-9 great job last year big points for him he's had a lot of success at this racetrack and typically done very well on street circuits. Chas Mostert in the foreground in the super cheap auto Ford Mustang. Lost the session yesterday. In fact, it was a really difficult day. So uh, they got some valuable track time right at the end, but they, they lost a lot of time. He was pretty cranky about that. New livery this weekend also for Nick Perkat. They had their traumas at the last event in Darwin at Brad Jones Racing with damage to Tim Slade's car, damage to McCauley Jones. Who I mentioned in the broadcast yesterday has become a, a world champion since we last saw him. <laughs> He's the world Explain burpee that. champion. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but look it up online what a burpee is. It's not what you think it sounds like. Uh, but he did 870 of them in an hour, and they're applying to the Guinness Book of Records to say that he's a world champion. So, Scopey and I are kind of thinking, big question mark, why? why? <laughs> Mark Winterbottom's on screen here, four poles and three victories at this location. And I love street circuits, and this is the reason why. Giant curbs, the trajectory of the cars, the way in which they launch over those curbs and manage the radius of the corners, try and extract the most out of these things. They're looking for the impossible. They want a perfectly straight racetrack, which is called a drag strip. They don't have that here. So you've got to get over the curbs, you've got to flatten out those corners, you've got to manage the ride control, which is a huge part of performance around here. We asked the question yesterday, or I posed the rhetorical question, I wonder whether it's rougher as a result of the, the awful situation with the floods that Townsville and this region endured back in February. We asked the question to Fabian Coulthard, and I spoke to him again about it this morning. It was an emphatic no. I don't think that there's been any real dramatic change with the racetrack. That's close. Jamie Wincup uh, actually almost probably getting in the way of Shane Van Gisbergen in that process. So more replays here. This was a popular act yesterday to run wide on the exit of turn six. And uh, the line there has always been to be extremely wide on the curb. And then when it was wet yesterday in that first practice session, there was something that made it wider. <laughs> almost unusable, wasn't it? It was incredibly slippery. Lee Holdsworth got away with a big moment there. And he didn't actually spin, but he locked all the wheels up when he was out of control and almost went to the fence on the right-hand side. We saw Wink up off the road at 11. We saw Perkut off the road at 13. We saw Holdsworth off the road at 6. We saw everybody running wide down here at Turn 2. One of the real tricks to this racetrack is negotiating this bumpy braking area from top speed and then trying to get into this apex, which is quite a long way around the corner, and they've eased that wall a little bit on the left-hand side. I made mention earlier of the awful scenario back in February where this whole region was inundated uh, with extreme weather and uh, shocking floods. There was sadly loss of life, massive loss of livestock, incredible loss of property. So the community, not only Townsville, but this entire North Queensland dry tropics region was 
uh, immensely devastated and uh, there's been a huge community effort, uh, federal, state government, local community and council done a huge job and the community just rolling up their sleeves and getting on with it. But these are the sorts of adversities that the people in this region have had to overcome and uh, so this is where we're currently racing, believe it or not, you know, in and around this area. We're only, well, kilometre, maybe kilometre and a half to the west of the CBD of Townsville and we're fortunate to be able to come back here and uh, bring the circus to town and find lots of joy and lots of pleasure and it's against some pretty difficult circumstances. Well done Townsville. So a bit of a pause in proceedings. Most people have come back into the pit lane now. In fact, there's only one active race car on the track and it's James Golding, in fact two now. J uh, Gary Jacobson's gone out there. There's a few more beginning to spill out, but um, looks pretty encouraging for the Red Bull guys. So they've probably answered part of the questions that we've been throwing up of, you know, does the form that they've had year on year roll over? The tech spec change to the cars across the summer period really destabilized a bit of their stability and continuity because they've had great performance really for a decade, haven't they, as a team? Yep. So they've been rattled a little bit by that and, and against the backdrop of that car also performing well, which has elongated that gap, hasn't it? It's kind of emphasised the margin between them. So uh, Van Gisbergen currently on a 12.9. That's all but matching the lap record. And Jamie Wincup, his teammate, is only 0.12 slower. Greg Murphy. Hello. Uh, I was out for a minute. Hey, listen, uh, we're just like, talking about Shane Van Gisbergen in there, and I, I caught up with him this morning as we were leaving the hotel. He actually had a bit of a bounce in his step. We saw at Darwin uh, three weeks ago. He was a bit down in the dumps, couldn't find the, the rhythm that he was looking for in that car, and he sort of struggled all weekend. But he was very positive this morning when I spoke to him, and he, just, he told me also that they had something that they were going to try that was quite significant with the car this morning. They've just been in here. They've changed all the dampers in this car going down a different direction again, or trying something to find a direction for him. But at the moment, he's quite Fast. So this will be interesting to see what happens when he rolls back out and say quite a significant change has happened to Shane. And Murph, I'm about 40 metres away from you. Wave at me. There you are. I can see you. And I've just walked past six garages, all of them changing shocks and springs. And it goes to your point, Neil. The nature of this street circuit, the gnarly nature of it, as we look at that shell car on camera, is that this is the best opportunity, can't believe I'm going to say this, where Holden, I've got a spring in my step, might really bounce back this weekend. Because the little advantages that we've seen, particularly from the aerodynamic tunability of that Mustang, don't matter so much here at this circuit. This is going to be about tuning the race car to the curves, the bumps and the gnarly stuff that is a street circuit. It's going to be a fascinating weekend. It will be. Thanks both Greg and Mark for the update there. We've jumped on board with Jamie Wincup and though he and his teammate are up at the top of the tree at the moment and Jamie's just done a personal best mid-sector, if you look over his left shoulder and watch that wheel work, he's working for his dollars out there at the moment. Certainly is. I, I spoke about a beautiful rhythm and fluency that he has for this location, but not showing it off at the moment because he's got a pretty wild device and he's he's got the tiger by the tail at the moment. Did you see the way when he grabbed third gear then he, and, and late in the load of the corner where it just wanted to leap out from underneath him? He's just done a 13-2, which is a little over a tenth and a half slower than his best. It's a busy racetrack. Top speed's 255 kilometres an hour. Meantime, the triple three car of Fabian Coulthard, who picks up his 400th race tomorrow, has just gone to the top on the 12-8. Tell you what, you wouldn't want to do 70 laps like that. Like Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you'll need the physio at the end of it. And not wrong. <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. Um, and in fact, that corner out of 11 represents more than eight odd seconds of ongoing lateral load on the left side of the car. So left rear tyre cops a big punish there. It's a great balance assessment of your car. You're trying to do two things. You're trying to turn the car and drive the car at once. And uh, the Dunlop tyre does a great job, but not great enough to be able to handle more than 600 horsepower when you're really trying to get stuck into it around there. And one of the things that I'm interested in, because the Mustang doesn't look as nice at the moment. I know Coulthard's at the top of the, the pile, but this is this big slide you just spoke of. Yeah, watch it's late. So, I mean, this is normal. Second gear, you can easy glide it up. But watch after the third gear change. A bit more turning to come. Way! <laughs> and he was having a bit of a think about a uh, brake bias change at that stage. And then in Jamie's mind, it went, don't worry about the brake bias. I might just catch that little slide. Yeah, exactly. Pretty cool. So without being too propeller head-ish, what you do around street circuits is you've always got to try to 
make the car ride the kerbs nicely and ride the bumps nicely. You can achieve that in various ways and everyone in pit lane's got a different methodology, but if you've got a lot of sway bar on the car, a lot of anti-roll bar, the method of, of how much roll stiffness you have versus spring versus roll bar is always hard to mix. And traditionally, cars that have got big anti-roll bars on them don't like street circuits for one bump. So a single wheel bump upsets them too much. And that's what it looks like too much with a Mustang at the moment. The car looks like it's got too much bar, not enough spring. So it'll be interesting to see whether they are able to dampen that out of that car as the weekend goes on. And obviously, we're not privileged to look at the minute details of a setup sheet within any of these race teams. But uh, once you've set a particular direction, particularly on a weekend where you've lost a session, as they did for practice one yesterday, very difficult to just undo the, the theory that you're sticking with and then you go down a completely different pathway. You just can't, in the limited time that you've got, you just can't do a wholesale pickup and go, right, we're going to philosophically change everything in our engineering philosophy and then hope to fine tune it to make it work. Because remember, and I'm sure everybody at home is well aware, looking at that totem and looking at the times at the end of armour or qualifying in every race, there's minute margins of time between everybody. So a tenth or two is literally the difference between hero and zero. So if you just suddenly zig when you needed to zag with your setup, you can turn yourself into an instant nobody. Yep. And the previous racetracks we've gone to have been a little bit, in, in terms of the, the differences, the disparity between venues, they've been more down the trail of running bigger bars. So if you, you've actually had the car like that, then that's the, that's the issue. So let's turn up the volume, have a listen. We're in the front grill of Jack LeBrock's car, just under the Holden emblem. One of the great layouts. Here we go, Hood. shot into here because that actually just shows there's the camera just under the whole line but it does show how tight the entry is here and those tires uh, they're put there for a purpose Tim Sheckin and Craig Baird Dave Stewart were all out there locating them on Thursday to make sure there's no shortcuts getting in and out of pit lane so there's a transit time that they're trying to make sure is fair for everybody and that's what the guys were doing in terms of those tire locations Great scene of the North Queensland Stadium that's being built just in the background there behind the Reed Park Street Circuit. We've got 14 minutes and 20 seconds remaining practice three before we get into the process of armour or qualifying to sort out the starting order for race 17, the Wattpack Townsville 400, 200 kilometres to come. In a condensed weekend because of the weather earlier in the weekend, everybody trying to learn a lot in a little time at the moment. The fastest is Fabian Coulthard from Shane Van Gisbergen. Point one six of a second is the margin between those two Very Kiwis. Very little in it at the moment. In fact, McLaughlin's just come up to make it one and two for the Shell Vipar Racing Team, Marco. Bit of a struggle down here at the Erebus Racing Team, Panright Racing. You can see David Reynolds' car here with the wheel alignment jigging on it because he's tapped the wall at the exit of turn two just at the start of what was going to be a race run. Now, isn't it remarkable, with all the money we've got in the game, that the best way to check your wheel alignment now still is a little piece of fishing line, if you can see that there. So they can adjust that either way. The boys are measuring with steel rulers against the rim, the wheel, and the hub to get that equalised both sides. Then they can measure the front of the rim and the rear of the rim and the difference. And that's the best way to check if you've knocked anything out of whack. Well done, Larko. And that is the still in all sorts of car racing technology, the best way to do it, as you said. And that's effectively checking the toe. So you check the dimension from the front and the back of the wheel and understand how much toe in or toe out that that wheel may have. And that's the first way of seeing whether you've actually hit the, hit the wall or actually changed the geometry of the car. And they'll put that back on the setup patch and do what they call a set down and check the corner weights afterwards. And that will also be another methodology of how you fix that. 
boys, uh, for your interest, uh, Scavey Crombo just up there. I just watched uh, Shelby Power do a change on Fabian Coulthard's car. Often we see, you know, dampers changed in pairs, front or rear. I just saw them change the right rear damper by itself and by, yeah, not the left rear, so just the right rear. So that would be maybe looking at a crossweight scenario there, Scavey, or something for the 3-3-3 this weekend, Fabian Coulthard. But, yeah, really interesting to see only one damper being changed. Or sometimes an anomaly in the behaviour of them Correct. too. So that, that's another thing it can be. But it's interesting. What, what's extraordinary at the moment is the level of minute detail that everybody's chasing from an engineering standpoint to get the most out of their cars and their drivers. They are chasing these finite amounts. It's crazy. This is Gary Jacobson, who got a bad sportsmanship flag earlier for touching the tyres on the pit lane entry. That's touching something that's a little more robust, giving that wall a rub. Ouch. Now, that's... You saw Mark Larkham describing before how you measure the toe and the impact of touching tyres, walls, other cars. That might need the strings on it after it. For sure. Now, yesterday, you, you hung your hat on Simona and the device that we saw on the racetrack being a torch. You hung your hat very heavily. I said it was a tape measure. Oh, sorry, a tape measure. Yeah, I've got it the wrong way around. But it turned out to be a torch. See, if I'm going to clout you, I need to get my facts straight. But you, you, you put the house on it. I wish I had some money on it. I got it the wrong way around. Skaggy was all revved up about the whole idea of a tape measure arriving on the racetrack. It turned out to be a torch. The fact of the matter is none of us had a clue. And, uh, well, either shouldn't have been there. No, exactly. <laughs> so, anyway, Simona's actually just moved up five spots into 12 positions. She's been back home. Said to her, you've been jet-setting around the planet. She goes, no, I just wanted to be home for a couple of weeks. So after Darwin, she went and spent some time with family, where it's very hot in Europe at the moment. She thought that was ideal training for here, and then when she got here, it was a bit cooler and wet. That was a nasty rear brake lock in the Shell Power racing car there. As we pick up Chaz, who's on a good lap, Good. That car looked fantastic through turn five and six just then. So Mostert, who's done his fastest first sector, we'll have a look at his next sector. We get it. In fact, he's done the best of the session, Mostert. So that car, when it wheeled out in practice in the rain, it was the fastest car. He lost pretty much a large chunk of practice two and was quite discouraged by how they had lost so much track time through the course of yesterday afternoon with a technical issue, electronic issue. Gee, that car came off the last corner nicely. He's gone to the top. That's the best time of the weekend, 12.6. Looks good. That did not move coming off the corner, and he fed it a lot of throttle percentage. Yeah, it came off turn 11 well. So that's a decent set of tyres. In fact, highly likely brand new, by the way, that was performing. So that's a very good time, and starting to get down towards the best numbers that we've ever seen. Meantime... Nick Perkett on screen has also been given a bad sportsmanship flag for giving those tyres a rub on the pit lane entry. Now, given the pack that you and I have got now about hard and soft tyre, mm. we're using the soft tyre this weekend. Not the super soft, just soft. That's what you asked me to do, and I'm going along with it. <laughs> given that they've got seven sets of tyres, you're going to see a qualifying rehearsal at the end of this session because there's plenty of tyres for the weekend based on the quantity of the soft tyre we've got. The orange light in the windscreen indicates the soft tyre. And given that number of tyres, with five or six minutes to go, this is going to heat up. So Moss has already chucked the set at it, probably, but it's going to get really good. Macaulay Jones up to fifth, Murph. Well, he hasn't actually. Uh, just oh. checked with Matty Roberts, and uh, that was his P1 set that uh, just went on. So they'll be a pretty good set of tyres. Obviously, they go from all their practice tyres, rate them in order, and the P1s are the best ones I've got. So they've done a few Ks, but uh, yeah, second hand ones. are about to make a damper change, rear damper change for Chaz Mostert sitting here. No greens uh, sitting here ready for him just yet. Wow. Well, that's McLaughlin's just it? eclipsed the number, though, with a 12 5. Six one hundredths of a second over Mostert, but if they weren't brand new tyres, they must have been pretty handsome to do those numbers. But that is a very good time. Be a little bit of uh, frustration performance in that as well. It'd be a bit of get this into you, track and car and people. I'll show you. I'll show you. And that's good. We want to see Chaz fired up and getting stuck into it. So McLaughlin, Mostert, uh, Coulthard, then orders one to four at the moment. Camouflage colours on cars 9 and 99 this weekend for David Reynolds and for Anton. David off the back of a runner-up on Sunday in Darwin. Awesome performance. And this is James Golding, car number 34. He's got a new teammate this weekend who's just rolling out behind him in Michael Caruso. And he's 
caught up with Rich Holway in regards to Michael Caruso. He's sitting down 24th at the bottom of the time sheets. He said he is struggling at the minute, trying to get used to this new car for the weekend. He said he's just chasing support. The car is a little bit too soft for him at the moment, and he really needs some rear support in that car. He's, they've just done a rear damper change as they've sent him out for another uh, go in this session. Thanks for the update. And, uh something of a coming home for Michael Caruso who spent a very large chunk of his supercars career at Gary Rogers Motorsport. He's now in the Boost Mobile car there. Five seasons so he would have found his way to the workshop pretty easy when he went down there to acclimatise and met some old friends. He was really excited. He shouted out to me earlier to let me know that this was going to happen and he's been busting to get back in. We'll see him in the Pertec Enduro Cup later in the year, oddly enough with a different squad. And I mentioned downstairs before when we first got going at the top of the session that, that no reflection, no casting any shadows on Chris Pippa. There's just a limit to how many outings a co-driver can have so that it's still fair to the other co-drivers. So there's a cap on those and Chris reached it. So when Rihanna was talking about Michael dealing with Richard Holway about support, he's actually looking to stiffen the rear spring to hurt Greg Murphy so that they did. Mm. Uh, one side of the car on Fabian Coulthard, which that often can happen because on the unloaded side, you stiffen that up, helps the drive traction a little bit and also helps the car in terms of the way it looks after the left-hand rear tyre. All the way around that section that Neil spoke about, the left-hand rear tyre gets tortured from 9, 10, 11, 12. And that'll be a big consideration this afternoon for 70 laps around here. That left-hand rear tyre cops an absolute hammering. Gary Jacobson has just done the fastest in Sector 1. So Jacobson fastest in Sector 1, then Mostert, and then Di Silvestro. So Nissan fastest in the first and third sectors. Cam Waters. Whoa. That's close. Nice close. to go. He was quick yesterday. And uh, that's the run up to turn three. And. Uh, that's maximising everything you've got on the street circuit. And that's, that's my favourite visual on this racetrack, crossing boundary street of turn 10. Cars are leaping and dancing there big time. Even though the colours are the same for Tim Slade, it's actually a different vehicle this weekend for him. The car they raced in Darwin was damaged. And uh, Tim is, where's Tim at the moment? 19, so he's got three quarters of a second to find. Surgery at the back of the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car for Van Gisbergen. He's dropped to ninth after being quick early on, so they're up doing spring or a damper or some combination of the above. Just trying to find perfection in that car at the moment as we go back to Chad's position number two, six one hundred slower than McLaughlin. I wonder whether they put fresh tyres on Mostert now because there's only four and a half minutes remaining, and for sure that'll be the case with Van Gisbergen and Co. Bad sportsmanship flag also given there to the Everyone's hit those tyres, so maybe they're actually out a little bit too far. But the car looks really good through there. In fact, that's the best looking car through five and six, and it climbs that curve beautifully and it settles immediately. That was copybook, wasn't it? Yep. So the, actually, Chaz was on the concrete apron, actually off the edge of the racetrack, and he's done it again there. He's maximum attack here. This is looking like a beautiful lap. That was cool. Adam Dubois, engineer. Did he just roll out of it then? Yeah, he has. That looked really tidy. That... So if they're happy with that, and Adam's brought him in to stick some new Dunlops on it, then stand back because you might see some fireworks from this young guy. A bit of speculation around what's happening in his world at the moment. One of the pathways that was being touted got closed off on the weekend when the announcement came on Thursday night that Fabian Coulthard Scott McLaughlin will be remaining together as a duo at Shelby Power Racing. And we're about to get uh, that first indication now of uh, green rubber team. So uh, Fabian Coulthard about to roll. McLaughlin's already out there now on a green set and Wind Cup now rolling on green. And so I think for Mostert, who he's only a couple of ticks away from giving that uh, car a check on a new set of rubber too. Thanks, Greg. Pretty much going to be a quality rehearsal for everybody, isn't it? Because they've got some rubber in hand. This is Andre Heidgartner, who is the best of the rest at the moment. We've got Mustangs one through six, and Andre sitting in seventh place. He's only a third of a second away. We've already seen him on the podium this year, plus fifth of century. So we're just inside three minutes. Uh, about two thirds of the field active on the racetrack at the moment, and there'll be a flurry of activity on a brand new Dunlop tyre here. 
let's see what they can produce. The best number that we've seen so far, the best of the weekend, is McLaughlin on a 12-5. Most has done a 12-6, but records a 12-9 held by Percat. Quali record, just for information, also McLaughlin, but he did it two years ago. He did it in 2017. He did a 1 minute 11 99 08. So an 11 round here. That's your hair on fire, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, almost one second faster, wasn't it? Look at that. Pretty dry session we saw yesterday afternoon. There are numbers and colours and things changing everywhere here at the moment. And Scott Pye has now come up to be the fastest Commodore. He's come up to fourth. Is Reynolds, who's actually, he didn't put a new title on. He's on his P1 set, so that's still a second-hand set for Dave. So let's just see what that does for him. He's done his fastest first sector, but he's a long way away in the middle. Comes up, Anton comes up 14 spots. So deep as into eighth. Something's really cool about the way in which Anton goes motor racing, and this is his teammate, David Reynolds. He spends a lot of time studying, thinking about, and driving race cars. You know, between Winton and Darwin, he was running around at the motorplex that is owned by Paul Morrison on the Gold Coast, getting some seat time in cars. He was off at Malalar in a little Toyota 86. He does a bit of driver coaching. He spends a lot of time thinking about technique, and you can see that the way in which he's applying himself to the task at the moment is really working. Now, we've seen a best sector split for McLaughlin in sector one. Personal best in two. Didn't look nice, Mark. Uh, in the last set, out of the last quarter then, he just didn't quite hit the numbers, didn't get it right. So still a better time than anybody else at 12-4. But uh, I reckon he'll determine that there's a little bit of time to be achieved at the apex and the exit of the final corner. He just pushed a bit wide. So have a look at this though. This is maximizing every millimeter of this racetrack. And watch the right hand rear, because when he turns it, it's got limited droop. So he hasn't hit the curb at this point. Now watch this. Picks it up go-kart style that exactly help it to turn so the two rear wheels on a supercar are tied together the way the differentials are in this car there is no difference between the rolling speed of the inside and the outside rear wheels one of the aids to help the car turn and mark made the point before about the strength and grunt of the anti-roll bars on the car is it's tied together so significantly that as the car rolls it's actually picking up its inside rear that helps it rotate Kiltar 12-2 there's a number now that's the number that McLaughlin was probably capable of achieving had it not gone awry in the final corner so that's he's got him and he's got him under brakes at turn one and he's got him under brakes at turn 11 I, I I reckon Fabian's car looks better than Scott's at the moment. Good news for Tim Sway. Different chassis working well for him. Position number five. So 12-7. He's come up to sit in behind Jamie Wincup. So 12-2-8. Kiltard over McLaughlin, who's back in the pit lane. The checker flag is now out. What's Jamie got for us? So he's got a personal best in the mid sector. Just wagged the tail a little bit on the exit of the final corner in the lower gear. And he's gone up a spot. He's displaced Chaz Mostert. He's done a 12-6. He's a third of a second away from Kultai. And I wonder whether Mostert hold oh, a fresh tire. Percat comes right up now with a 12-4. Great job. Fastest Holden. And only two tenths or less than two tenths. One and a half tenths away from Fabian. Lee Holdsworth now comes up to fourth. So Percat into second. Holdsworth into fourth. I wonder whether Mostert didn't get the new tire yield because that car looks superb it did. on the older tire. Very strange. Milwaukee Racing entry, Will Davison at the final corner. Beautiful shot that just shows that line there. He's used first gear to launch it out the other side. He's chasing Coulthard on a 12-2. Percat, McLaughlin, Holdsworth, 1-2-3. And Will's sitting in 10th. That last lap was a 12-9, which was a 10th away from his best. Great have, session. Have a look at the margins. There's uh, 20 cars basically within 7 tenths of a second. Shane Van Gisbergen is down in 18th, so a bit of work to do for Shane when his teammate Jamie Winkup is up in fifth. Confirmation of the results out of practice three for the Watt Pack Townsville 400. One tenth of a second is the margin between Fabian Coulthard and Nick Percat. Crazy margins as Mark just pointed out. So you look across the top, <laughs> you get all the way down to 13th position before you break out of the half second. So that's pretty cool. Cam Waters heads that next group. Todd Hazelwood, who's done well here before. This was the place where he hurt his shoulder last year. Fractured his shoulder, but he's had great performances in Super 2. He's just one position ahead there of Mark Winterbottom. Anton ended up being in 14th position. Michael Caruso, who's a visitor this weekend to the Boost Mobile team in 24th position. So they're straight into the detail here at DJR Team Pinsky. Looking at the sectors. Uh, Scott McLaughlin just going through it with 
Richard Harris there, mate, uh, looking straight at some of those uh, little bits of information. We looked on that lap, you ran a little bit wide at the last corner, yeah. it seemed to go in a bit deep, or what, what was the issue? Uh, it was a little, I went deep especially, but I think the GRM car was a little bit, I just, it was just distracted, I just made a stuff up, so I just didn't know what he was going to do, uh, but it went wide. Um, but yeah, that was all right. I think Fab's is good lap, so good for me to look at data and that, but it's definitely a lot left of my thing. So expectation on that, just on the rest of the lap, uh, improvements where needed, uh, yeah, other than that last car. No, nah, car was really good. I just uh, just need to put the get lap together myself. Um, yeah, look at the data now and we'll see what we, where, where, where we went wrong. But I'm actually really happy with the car. I just need a little bit more. What do you reckon about you, yesterday, the, the process of yesterday, the laps that you probably didn't get, where are you in your, your sort of program moving forward? Have you missed out? Have you lost anything? Yeah. The time has been a problem? I think everyone's missed out a little bit. I think especially with the race running. Yep. Um, especially with like the floods and stuff that happened up here. No one knows sort of like degradation wise what the track's going to do either. So I think um, if it's going to be different. So uh, yeah, look. Everyone's in the same boat in that regard, but uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. I think yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Thanks, mate. We're going great, Fabian. He was uh, top of the timesheets up there, just uh, a couple of tenths. Fab's uh, good session. Did you get uh, everything out of that you needed? We saw a, lot, a few changes going on with your car, a little fine tuning. Yeah, that's what practice is for. So, um, yeah, we've just made a couple of adjustments here and there, but nothing too crazy, not far from our window. So. Um, relatively happy. We saw Scott make a bit of an error on his lap. You, how, how do you reckon you extracted everything out of that tyre on that one run? It was OK. Um, you know, you're probably still exploring the boundaries a little bit, um, seeing what you can get away with for qualifying. So probably last corner wasn't perfect, um, but the rest of the lap was pretty good. Thanks, Bob. Cheers. Nick Perkett, very busy session for everyone, giving sort of a little bit of in and out running yesterday with the rain. I mean, great session for you, though. Yeah, it was good. Um, I knew we had more than what we showed in 15th yesterday, um, just purely because of the tyre we were on. So, yeah, I was, I was confident we could probably actually match the time Lee did. Um, then obviously everyone evolves during the, this session, so it was good. We made some changes, some worked, some didn't. Um, and hopefully we're on the right path because we got, we got something different in the front end on both cars this weekend, and hopefully one of them gives us a direction. So. See so yeah, how we go. Qualifying is the one that for us that we need to really need to nail. Um, but then as a quality sim, not too bad. But I don't know what you know Penske and Scotty did. I don't even know if they put tyres on it or not. But um, I imagine they would have. But who knows? There was a few question marks yesterday. How much the, ra the rain was going to affect the surface overnight and things like that. Was it what you expected out there? Um, it doesn't feel grippy, but we're going faster than last year. So like my reference type in the dash. Um, that's a tenth and a half quicker than what we did last year in quali, so I think we're seventh. So track's fast, but uh, it doesn't feel that normal hooked up grip feeling that we get. It feels like quite greasy and on top of the road, so we'll see. It could be interesting for tie in the race. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. I'm down here standing with Chaz Mostert, super cheap Mustang, and I was really interested in the demeanour of Chaz when he pulled in, got out of his car with a real sense of urgency, pulled his helmet off, put in his little helmet cooler container over behind me here. And if you look at his face now, Dave, before we interrupt, just have a look at the intensity. This is the really important part of the day. When you're fresh out of the car, the adrenaline's up, the download language is really good and succinct, and they're right in the middle of it now. And unfortunately, I'm just going to have to dive in and... Interrupt. Sorry, I'll, I'll be brief as I can, mate. I can see you right into it. Um, P6, mate, we were really impressed with what you did on a U set of tyres, particularly after yesterday really being a nothing day for you. Um, didn't yield what you wanted from the new tyre? Uh, just uh, one of those things. I don't think we had probably the, the bang on pressure for it. The used tyre, um, obviously ready scrub. You build load in the tyre a lot more. So I think um, for a green tyre, we just need to question that a little bit. So I just never really felt like the tyre was under me and uh, started to come back towards uh, the end of the lap. But um, then I tried to be a hero in two corners to try and make up for the first sector. So, uh, yeah, look, it's practice. You've got to have a go. You've got to push the limits. Um, you know, I'm pretty, to be honest, I'm really happy the stuff we're trying this weekend. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it's worth it or not. It could be hero, it could be zero. Well, you're certainly intense here, mate, talking with Adam, so I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Interesting to hear from Chaz Mostert there. Mark Scave, Craig Lowndes here with me to wrap up that session. Not entirely satisfied. They still look like they've got plenty of work to do heading into qualifying and some more pace possibly to find from the green tyre. I would have had money on him putting a new tyre on being fastest car by a mile. I mean, on the... On the